These demonstrations are part of the AXES project and as part of this particular project there's a number of different streams and one of them is looking at resilient PNT. And the aim of that is to look at what happens with your positioning, navigation and timing information if GPS or GNSS in general is lost. Shipping in the North Sea region typically follows similar routes or lanes, resulting in high densities of traffic along heavily used routes and at pinch points such as the English Channel, Rotterdam and the Kiel Canal. Traffic density across the North Sea region is continually increasing due to the emergence of bigger, faster vessels, leading to reduced manoeuvrability in shipping lanes. This reduced manoeuvrability is compounded by the ongoing growth in offshore installations such as wind farms, oil and gas platforms, marine nature reserves and other fixed structures and areas needing space at sea. These issues can lead to an increased risk of collision and grounding. The aim of AXES is to demonstrate ways of reducing this risk, developing example e-navigation services that improve the mariner's safety and efficiency while supporting the protection of the marine environment. AXES will develop services that provide the seamless exchange of useful and important data to support vessel and port operations. These services include support for augmented reality head-up displays, tactical route exchange, the Mariner's Notification Service and Underkeel Clearance, to name just a few. One service, the Multi-Source Positioning Service, will provide the resilient position, navigation and timing information needed by all other e-navigation services. Based on GNSS, but incorporating independent and complementary backup systems, the multi-source positioning service will provide seamless PNT information when GNSS is lost. But why is this resilience needed? We all use GPS nowadays. It's absolutely central to our industry and our commerce and our transportation. But the interesting thing is that the maritime world has adopted it almost completely to the degree that many ships have no other means of navigation apart from GPS and looking out of the window. And when satellite navigation is not available and has failed, or the sun is making radio noise is causing us to be unable to hear the satellites or somebody is jamming it the key is to have another system that we can fall back to seamlessly automatically and that for that time we'll take over from GPS and carry the burden. To have total reliance and total faith on our position we need to make sure that position is going to be reliable and we can do that by having resilient PNT and that's one of the streams in this project so it's running into two streams we have the streams that are looking at the different aspects to effectively mitigate for part of the problems within the North Sea region as we see them progressing and the PNT stream, the resilient PNT information is part of that and how we make sure that position information which underpins all of that decision making is actually going to be reliable and honest and true. The demonstrations took place aboard the Trinity house vessel Galatea. They involved deliberately jamming GPS aboard the ship using a GPS jammer owned and operated by the UK's Ministry of Defence. The demonstration was split into two parts. The first part showed the effect of the loss of GPS on the ship's systems by simulating a scenario where the vessel is approaching a jammer that's perhaps concealed somewhere on another vessel or on the nearby coastline, with the signal getting stronger and stronger as the ship approaches. So imagine now that we're on our ship and we're un unknowingly heading towards that jamming signal. And it's going to slowly increase the nearer we get to it we start getting these alarms go off. As the jamming signal builds up, we'll get more alarms. So we're heading towards this, but it's night time. You're on the bridge by yourself. A couple of alarms that you're kind of normally used to, you can go and deal with. When you start getting a host of alarms going off, what do you do? But we can see, if we come over to some of the units over here, we can see some of the effects starting to happen. And we've got all the alarms, but we can see that our differential GPS receiver has now lost all the satellites. Our AIS unit is also complaining. We've then got these units alarming out. So the compass and the gyro compass use GPS to help correct for any errors, any latitude drift errors. They've now gone into an alarm state. Our depth sounder doesn't know where we are in terms of trying to correlate the depth 
to the chart position. You know, the, the radar itself is showing that error of, of nav speed on the right, and we're still at relatively low, low data levels. We've still got some systems operating. Our, our electronic chart in the center there still has green numbers on it. As that jamming signal increases, as we get nearer still to that jammer, we'll see that turn red. You're now trying to work out why are all these alarms going off? What do I do about it? Have I got a system failure? Has an antenna fallen off? Someone actually trying to cause me problems? We can see on our electronic chart, we've got various alarm sounding going off. We've got alarm signals that our position is unsafe. Our error is, error is growing. The position solution is getting worse because that signal is increasing to the point that that receiver is now struggling to know where we are and calculate its position. But the implication is that you lose a lot of the information about where you are and a lot of the situational awareness information of what's around you. Things like the radar, even though the actual function of the radar itself hasn't changed, it's now entered an alarm state because it uses GPS for an additional function. So how do you know that you can still rely on it? Well, you have to go back and understand what that error means, how you can disable that error, and, and know what you can do to make it usable again. And that takes knowledge, understanding, and practice. The second part of the demonstrations showed the effect of resilient PNT with a separate system backing up GPS and taking over when GPS was lost. The ship's main GPS data feed was interrupted with a prototype PNT data processor. This processor was configured to accept inputs from GPS as the primary source of PNT and eLoran as the alternative and complementary backup source. The processor monitors each of these systems separately and independently. It can detect problems with GPS before they can affect the ship's systems, at which point it switches automatically and seamlessly to the alternative system. Alan, could you now start the jamming unit again, please? So, same scenario. We're on the bridge of the ship. It's night time. We can't really see much. We're relying on our instruments and the equipment of what's going on. We're approaching that jamming source and it's slowly going to start getting stronger the nearer we get to that jamming signal. And this time we'll wait and see what happens on the bridge. What we'll see when the signals start getting to the point that this unit starts detecting the problems, it'll start saying it's got a problem and there'll be a little area of where it's trying to make that decision. Is it a real problem? Isn't it? We'll see it change a little few times and perhaps work its way through until it says, no, I have a problem. Let's now feed that, that ELORAN data through to the bridge system. And uh, you'll see the, the boxes change colour. See, it's just on the cusp now of, of saying I've got a problem. We'll see that go steady. Yeah, you can see how it's made the decision now that GPS is unreliable. We've swapped in eLoran data, and we're now feeding the ship systems with eLoran data. And you can hear all the alarms that are going off. There aren't any. It's done it seamlessly. So we're now navigating the ship using our resilient PNT data using eLoran, and we can go and look at the different systems that failed earlier and see that they're all working correctly and they're all still doing their design function. Our AIS unit is quite happily navigating. It's quite happily reporting our position using eLoran data. And it's the first time we believe this has ever been done. If we look at our echo sounder and the, the gyro compass, they're all quite happy. They haven't got a problem. We haven't got the alarms and the, the errors that we saw earlier. They're carrying on. We're getting to the point now where we're moving away from the jamming source. So the jamming signal strength is getting weaker, our GPS satellite signals are starting to be received, and shortly we should see the GPS receivers actually start giving their position back again, and we'll see the ship move back onto GPS as we move further away from our jamming signal and the effects start wearing off. Okay, you see we're now returning the ship back to, to normal operation. We can see on the screen here that all the inputs have turned green. The top one, was the one that we actually um, replaced with our prototype system. So that remained green during the second scenario. The next one down was actually still fed with GPS and was affected by the jamming. So that turned red to show that it was unusable and it had failed. As we've now moved away from the jamming signal and we've allowed the systems to, to recover, the jamming signal strength has got weak enough so that the receivers can now see the satellites again. That has now come back into operation. Our prototype system has now swapped back from eLoran into GPS and the ship is now navigating through its normal means.
We hope to show by these trials, and which has been a series of trials since 2008, uh, how vulnerable GPS is, and I think that it's, it's been it's been quite a hard pitch to sell because I think people have believed that GPS is infallible. And what we've shown over the, over these demonstrations is that GPS is vulnerable, and that Eloran can provide resiliency to position, navigation, and timing, not just in the maritime sector, but um, but in the land mobile sector and, and and everywhere that GPS is used actually. You can find out more about the Axes project by visiting www.axes.eu.